Hi, I'm Ksenia and thank you so much for joining me for this series looking at Jupiter's transits through each house of the horoscope. It is lovely to have you with me. I especially want to welcome all the people who are viewing this who are new to astrology. I hope this video helps you learn more and understand more about how astrology operates and the effects of astrology in your life. And also welcome back to those of us who are a little bit more seasoned in our knowledge of astrology. It's a pleasure to have you here as well. Hopefully if you are more seasoned in astrology you'll be able to help out those who leave comments in the comments section looking for answers and, quest and asking questions. So thank you for helping and supporting me in that endeavor and to help make this a beautiful community where we can communicate and uplift one another on our journey to know more about astrology. So we're going to be looking at Jupiter transiting through the houses. But first let's look at a little bit about Jupiter itself as a planet. There's so much to know about Jupiter. What a fantastic planet and it's such a joy and a thrill and a delight to be talking about Jupiter, stepping into Jupiter energy because he is known as in astrology the great benefic, bringing benefit, bringing expansion, bringing growth, bringing abundance into our lives wherever he sits in the chart, in the natal chart. But as I said in this instance we're looking at transits and, and the benevolence that he brings where that's going to be felt and experienced more um, according to transits. But let's start by looking at Jupiter. Well Jupiter is a magnetizer. If you think about Jupiter out there in the actual outer space, Jupiter energy draws things in. It's got this massive magnetis field for a start and it also it attracts objects around it into its gravitational pull. So it's, it's this massive planet and it is quite literally a magnetizer draws things to it out there in space and the same energy is represented by Jupiter uh, in astrology as well. So when it transits a house or a sign and we're using whole sign astrology with this where each sign represents a house it will draw things to it of the nature of that sign or that house. It will magnetize those things, pull those things in and make them uh, manifest more in the life of the individual and the life of the collective as well I might add too. As I said Jupiter is the biggest planet in the solar system and it is therefore very effectual. Jupiter uh, very nearly became a second sun in the formation of our solar system millions of years ago and would have entered into therefore a binary system with our, uh, our actual sun or maybe one of them might have gobbled the other up who knows but they uh, Jupiter didn't quite get there it didn't quite have the oomph that it took but nonetheless Jupiter is massive and he functions very much um, in the nature of a, a benevolent sun in our chart bringing confidence um, and bringing uh, illumination to things and because of his mass his energy, his energetic output, as I said, he has this monstrous magnetosphere um, that reaches out into um, the zone of Saturn, actually. They, it crosses into Saturn's orbit. Um, and because of this influence of Jupiter that is so expansive, quite literally in the skies and figuratively in astrology as well, the effects of, Ju of Jupiter are far reaching and very, very influential. Jupiter is expansive in astrology as goes with the, the idea and the nature of um, as above so below and him being the biggest planet the most expansive planet his energy in our lives is very expansive as well in fact he is so big that you could fit 1300 earth size balls <laughs> inside of Jupiter 1300 it's a phenomenal thought difficult to get our head around really not only that you could actually fit every single other planet in the solar system into Jupiter all at once. Go figure he's enormous. So he brings expansion with his transits and with his natal placement as well. He brings abundance as well. He brings enthusiasm. He brings opportunities. He brings as I said before confidence. He brings also a sense of morality to an area of our life wherever he's transiting. He brings a, a need for ethics to wherever he's transiting and he brings a sense of adventure and ooh, what could I experience now? What can this do for me? How can I utilize this? What, it, what can I learn about this? He brings that energy to the area of the chart that he's transiting as well. 
Jupiter rules being charitable, generosity, giving, and he will bring this character of benevolence into whatever area of your chart that he happens to be transiting. You will feel more benevolent, more charitable in, you know, and feel like giving to that area of your life in, a, in greater capacity. Jupiter is also very forward looking. And so his transit to a certain area of our house will give us more of a, a forward-looking approach to the themes of that house. He allows us, he's, he's actually a planet that connects to prophecy, and he allows us to gain a glimpse of the potential of the future possibilities of a house. He gives us the chance to extend and expand beyond our current limits in a certain area or realm of life that, that is connected to the house in which he's transiting. One of my favorite mantras that I use frequently is um, I expand to meet my destiny. I, this is my mantra when I practice yoga and do all sorts of other things in life and I remind myself I can expand and become big enough to um, embrace the destiny that the universe has for me, the highest vibrational good that is represented in my chart. So if you're feeling limited or blocked in a certain area, certain realm of life, just wait till Jupiter gets to that, um, that section of your chart and watch the blossoming occur. Watch, watch yourself expand beyond the, the limits you perceived that were around you. The blockages, the restrictions in a certain area can be absolutely sort of pushed out. The boundaries are expanded for you to experience more blessing, more abundance, more prosperity in a certain area. How this works is that well, Jupiter has a connection to our visioning processes, our you know our dreaming. Like Jupiter in ancient astrology rules the sign of Pisces, and Pisces is all about our dreams and and you know daydreams, night dreams, all that sort of thing. So Jupiter has a connection to the governance of our visioning, of our dreams, of our imagination, and our intuition. So it's our intuition and our imaginative visioning processes when we sit on the couch on a, you know, a nice spring afternoon with a cup of, you know, Earl Grey tea and we're looking out the window dreaming about what we'd like our life to look like, who we want to be, how we'd really like it to work out for us. That begins the process of expansion. Because it's in those processes of trusting our intuition and tapping into our imagination and our visioning you know, processes that we begin an, a shift of energy within us. And that's when the old hermetic principle of as within, so without starts to work for us. When we change our inner being, then we start to see external circumstances change to reflect that shift in energy within us. And Jupiter does his work on that inner level. He is also an externally manifesting planet, but he begins by working on this inner level, creating a higher vibration for us through allowing us to feel more abundance, more joy, more optimism, more joviality. The word jovial comes from the word Jupiter, actually. And it's through this inner change in our levels of optimism and uh, abundance consciousness that then we begin to see the manifestation happen in reality and we start to see our outer circumstances change and Jupiter begins that process by when he transits a house by lifting our vibrational level inner in our inner world to be able to receive on the outer world. Now Jupiter is named after the ancient Roman god, uh, king of the gods actually in mythology and there's an association with Thor in Norse mythology, there's an association with um, Zeus in Greek mythology and there's an association with Marduk in the ancient Babylonian mythology as well. So that he has links to all those energies of being the, the supreme god or governor over all or, um, you know, the, the, the one top authority, top dog, so to speak. And because of that, he actually rules in astrology lawmakers, judges, legal systems, higher levels of knowledge, um, places of, of learning that are of that, that higher level you know um, universities and colleges he also governs things like religion and belief systems long distance travels not just short little trips but the big we're talking Jupiter his big big travels overseas or to other you know countries that are far away he governs other cultural practices and other cultural beliefs he, like Jupiter represents other cultures in general and he also is a representation of higher knowledge from the divine realms. And it's this that makes him the Lord of intuition, the angel on our shoulder, giving us wisdom and guidance in our journey. The guru, as he's known 
in Vedic astrology. Jupiter is referred to as guru and there's a very good reason for that because he gives this wisdom, he gives this knowledge. He is the the wise, you know, angel on our shoulder. Now this is a spring series uh, that I am preparing. It's spring in Australia when I'm launching this series. If you're watching it at different times of the year, it'll be a different season obviously. But in Australia it is spring at the moment, which I thought was a perfect time to be doing a series on Jupiter and his transits because spring is about growth. Spring is about the expansion, the, the, you know, the blossoming and very much the, the abundant nature of Jupiter represented in spring. But Jupiter actually rules the colors purple and orange. And as you can see, I'm wearing a purple cardigan with my spring attire here. Um, and there's purple flowers all over my dress. Also, if you look behind me, I've decorated part of my house with um, a lot of purple and orange. There's an orange door there and a purple painting and so on and so on, because I really want to channel the energy of Jupiter in my home. I myself am a very highly Jupiterian person. And so I really want to bring that energy in. And Jupiter governs these things. Jupiter rules the crystals lapis lazuli and malachite. According to the, the research that I have done, there's some varying opinions around that. But this is malachite. I don't have any lapis lazuli on me at the moment, but I will be getting more. Lapis lazuli... Um, was often used and possibly malachite as well in ancient Egyptian jewelry and tomb decorations and so it was con it was was attributed to the the pharaohs or not attributed to the pharaohs but it had connections to this leadership element in ancient Egypt that was only the wealthy only the um, prosperous only the pharaohs and their families that were able to enjoy um, the luxuries of uh, lapis lazuli and malachite and of course, Jupiter has these associations with abundance and with wealth and with the lawgivers and leaders. Jupiter's day is Thursday. Now, those of you who are familiar with how the days of the week got their names will know that it's it comes from the Norse Thor's day. And we've already said Jupiter has an affiliation with Thor. Jupiter, um, Jupiter's day that he rules of the week is Thursday, Thor's day. Now, because of all these wonderful things that Jupiter governs, and we're going to talk about a few more of those in just a minute, but because he rules abundance, because he rules wealth, because he rules a certain type of leadership, that inspirational figure, that lawmaker, that religious leader, that spiritual leader, that divinely inspired leader, because Jupiter rules these things, Wherever Jupiter sits in your chart is where you're going to be able to channel and receive more abundance, more wealth, more um, opportunity, more good fortune, more prosperity. All these things that Jupiter rules will come into the house where your Jupiter sits in the natal chart. But that's a series for another day when we look at Jupiter through the houses in the natal chart. We're looking at transiting Jupiter in this series. So a bit more about the things that Jupiter rules. Let me read this list to you. He rules children. He rules wealth. He rules belief systems. He rules the blood. He rules the veins. He also rules the hips and the ability to move forward in life is obviously connected to our ability to utilize our hips. So Jupiter also governs our capacity and our ability to move forward in life as well. Jupiter rules everything from... Uh, of our, sort of accommodation of a very high level um, or public buildings of a very high level, universities, but things like castles, cathedrals, casinos are all ruled by Jupiter. Um, and not that casinos are of a high level, but there is the element of luck and wealth and prosperity that's sort of um, associated with casinos that gives Jupiter the rulership of casinos. But the belief systems around cathedrals and ashrams and the buildings that govern um, our belief systems or that connect with our belief systems. Jupiter rules those as well as the high level um, places where we reside, castles and, um, you know, um, estates and things like that of a, a very high nature, high caliber. He rules etiquette. He rules manners. 
In a woman's chart, Jupiter rules husbands and um, generally he rules beautiful things like joy and happiness. If we want to know where we can feel the most joy and happiness in life, look to where your Jupiter sits in your natal chart or where Jupiter's transiting. You know you'll be able to generate more joy in that area, more happiness. Jupiter rules devotion, being devoted to something or someone. At a perhaps not so pleasant level, Jupiter rules obesity. He is, after all, the largest planet in the solar system. He's big. Um, and if you have Jupiter placed in the first house, he can usually, in the natal chart, he can make you taller than average, but you've got to watch your weight in later age <laughs> because you can tend to spread out and become very Jupiter-like in the way you look, very round in the middle. In fact, Jupiter as a planet bulges in the middle due to his rotation speed and gravitational pull and all that sort of thing that affects um, the shape of Jupiter and he bulges out in the middle so when we have Jupiter in the first house we do have to be very careful of bulging out in the middle at some point in life hence I have to watch what I eat. <laughs> So Jupiter rules beautiful things as well, like benevolence, philanthropy, get my words out, and prayer. So these are glorious things that Jupiter rules. And these are only a few of the areas of life that you might notice Jupiter influencing through his transits or through your natal chart placement as well. There's, a, there's just masses of things, as is the, you know, befitting to the nature of a very big planet. There's a very big list of things that Jupiter governs in our lives but there's just a few now jupiter is at his most powerful in fire and water signs so when he's in the earth signs or the air signs it's not that he doesn't bring you know beneficial results he's just a little bit lackluster he doesn't have the oomph he doesn't have the you know ta-da kind of capacity that he would in water or fire signs he's just a little bit ta-da you know the energy is not quite the same not quite as full he is especially strong in Sagittarius which he rules Pisces which is the other sign that he rules in traditional astrology ancient astrology and he is especially strong where he is exalted in the sign of Cancer so if you are experiencing a transit of Jupiter to Pisces, Sagittarius or Cancer at some time in life, then you're going to experience uh, more, more of his benevolence in a very ta-da kind of way um, because of the strength of Jupiter in these signs. Jupiter has a natural affiliation with the ninth house, the most prosper not prosperous the most lucky house in astrology the most blessed house in astrology the ninth house and Jupiter has a natural affiliation to that house he also has a natural affiliation to the 12th house which is interestingly enough one of the malefic houses in Vedic astrology but Jupiter has an affiliation to that because of his governance of the sign Pisces which has all this 12th house energy um, so Jupiter is very comfortable when he's in the 12th house or the ninth house but Jupiter is actually um, has his strongest directional strength and greatest effect in either the first house, particularly the first house. That's where Jupiter has his greatest directional strength or gives the, the strongest influence for good. Um, but it, the, there is also a strong influence of Jupiter when he's in the 10th house. This is where Jupiter does his best work in the first house or the 10th house. So if you're experiencing that by transit as well, you're going to experience a lot more of the blessing, especially if you happen to have Sagittarius, Pisces or Cancer as your first or 10th house and Jupiter's transiting there. Hang on to your hats, it's going to be fun. <laughs> now, wherever Jupiter is transiting is where you can actually contribute most to society. And this is because Jupiter is charitable, Jupiter is generous, Jupiter is a philanthropist, Jupiter is a, a bene benefic, he brings benefits. So you yourself can be these energies or give these energies to the world and, and your role on the planet. So, you know, Jupiter might be transiting, for example, the fifth house so you can give your um, your benefit your charity your philanthropy to children because that is where um, the energy is of benevolence and generosity is being directed by transit also consider that in your natal placement of Jupiter as well where you can be the most generous and give um, you know in a very benevolent philanthropic way wherever Jupiter sits in your natal chart also so without further ado Let's go in now and have a look at where Jupiter is transiting and how it might affect you. So how do we find when Jupiter is transiting through the ninth house? 
Well, firstly, we need to know where Jupiter currently is, in what sign, and we're using whole sign astrology here. So you could go to a site like uh, planetwatcher.com or astro.com uh, and look for the chart of the moment at astro.com. And either of these will usually be able to then show you in which sign Jupiter is currently transiting. Now, as I am recording this particular video, Jupiter is in the sign of Capricorn. So we're looking at that as the whole sign placement for Jupiter right now. Now, because we're looking for the ninth house, we would want to then see Capricorn falling as the ninth house in astrology. And that would mean that Taurus is the rising sign where we are counting from in this example. So as you can see, Taurus there is the rising sign with the arrow. It is house one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Nine would be where Jupiter is currently transiting. But of course, if you're looking at this a few years down the track and Jupiter's in a different sign, then you'll need to, let's say Jupiter was in Pisces, you'll need to count all the way to Pisces. And that will tell you in this case, Jupiter is in the 11th house if you're a Taurus rising person. So really first place of call is to find out what sign Jupiter is currently transiting and see where that corresponds in your chart and then find the video to match that and you'll know what transit then that you're experiencing. When Jupiter transits the ninth house, we tend to feel a bit of an expansion of the usual boundaries of life. Things get a bit bigger for us philosophically, uh, internally, as well as externally. Our spiritual boundaries go way out. Suddenly we're more open to spiritual experience, spiritual practice, spiritual beliefs that we may never have explored before. And we might discover a lot about different ways of practicing spirituality uh, that uh, expand our horizons. Our physical experiences can also be expanded too. And any physical experience that leads to a moment or an, uh, a period of enlightenment is also seen uh, through this, this particular house. It's a house of adventure. And when we have an adventure, usually our soul and our mind and our philosophical worldview is expanded as well. And so Jupiter transiting through the ninth house brings that afresh into our lives also. So we become very interested in new beliefs and new spiritual practices. Sometimes we might travel to experience more of those things. We might go for a, a trip to an ashram in India, or we might spend some time in some sort of a, a Buddhist stupa or a yogic retreat or something as we explore for Westerners, that would be a different uh, cultural practice and a different spiritual practice. Or we might find someone from the East coming to explore a Western system of uh, belief or understanding or knowledge. In doing so, we're also going to be immersing ourselves into new cultural ways of doing things, new foods, new lifestyles, new ways of living. And these are going to be very intriguing for us as well. As I mentioned, we might be traveling to foreign corners of the globe in a search for greater wisdom and greater enlightenment that comes under this transit of Jupiter. So all in all, it's a great time for soul growth. It's a time when you're going to be wanting to read more spiritual books, attend more seminars, watch more YouTube lectures, just immersing yourself wherever you can in new philosophies, new ideas. You might, you know, sign up to go to TED Talks or something like that, or uh, go and attend an esoteric church. The, the world's your oyster in terms of exploring beliefs under this transit, not only because you're going to get more opportunities to do so, but you're going to find that your, um, your mind is more open to these things and more in, um, receptive to these things than you ever have been before. And remember, Jupiter is the magnetizer. He's going to pull these things into your sphere that you might never have encountered before. That might be a friend who takes you to some new, uh, you know, therapeutic dance workshop or something where you have a very spiritual experience or maybe you, you have a, a somebody who invites you along to some spiritual discussion group. These kinds of opportunities that, that don't usually appear on your doorstep may now appear on your doorstep allowing you to have more experiences of enlightenment and spiritual understanding. Not only that but you're going to feel more morally upbeat more idealistic now. Not that this is a particularly idealistic house, the ninth house, but Jupiter brings idealism into the house of beliefs. And of course, we've talked about as within, so without. 
the, the change in uh, optimism about your beliefs and your ideals, the morally integrous approach that you're now going to incorporate into your life is going to see external shifts in reality as well. You might get more opportunities, as I've said, to experience spiritual things, or you might have a, a chance to develop new spiritual uh, approaches or experience new gurus and teachers. It's a time when we're looking for the big philosophical answers to existence. The nature of the ninth house is to be more high-minded and to seek more uh, divine knowledge. And so you're going to be looking for that now. You might have big questions and be looking for big answers and you will usually receive them under the influence of Jupiter's transit here. This is a time when these light bulb moments can occur in terms of the, the spiritual truth and substance that we're actually hunting for in life. Ninth house is associated with publishing and Jupiter also has a very strong affiliation with the ninth house so he is also connected to ideas of publishing as well and when this these two are combining the ninth house and Jupiter you can be very lucky and blessed with publishing opportunities that come your way and chances to you know um, get a story accepted by a publisher or uh, get a, an opportunity to publish uh, articles in an in a online journal or something like that. Opportunities for publishing and literary achievements tend to abound more when Jupiter's in the ninth house. And I've already mentioned that this is a time when you can connect with new mentors, new gurus, new inspirational people in your life and of course that can be a lot of fun and very enlightening and enhancing but they'll be good relationships. Sometimes we come across people who inspire us and then the happiness with them wanes over time but these people when they come into your life under Jupiter's transit through the ninth house are likely to be sources of inspiration in your life for a good deal into the future for the long term. There might even be uh, some philanthropists among them or some sort of financial benefactors that have got your back now under this influence also. And if you are already spiritually oriented before this transit, this is a time when the wisdom keepers of the spiritual you know, associations you align yourself with are going to just boost your spiritual knowledge, your spiritual wisdom and your experience of uh, spirit and the divine all round. These father figures, they're actually going to be great uplifters of your soul during this time. So do seek out uh, gurus and wisdom keepers. You will be blessed by them under this transit. All round, as I've already said a number of times here already, it's a time when your spiritual life's going to blossom, going to flourish, going to grow. But also can grow your higher knowledge because that's also represented by the ninth house. You might decide you want to return to university or get a master's degree or do a PhD. Maybe you want to go to university for the first time under this transit. There will be a desire to expand your higher knowledge in traditional ways such as through university or through more progressive means depending on the sign through which Jupiter is transiting. Um, but more progressive means might mean doing an online course or doing some sort of webinar or something like that that allows you to access knowledge that wouldn't have previously been available to you. And we're not talking about secret hidden knowledge. We're talking about just higher levels of knowledge that you may never have been exposed to before. This increase in knowledge can also come from the fact that you're seeing life from a big picture perspective now as well, which is in a manner that you mightn't have seen. You might be very detail focused. And when Jupiter goes through the ninth house, suddenly you're seeing the linkages, the synchronicities, the big picture essentially. Your judgments, your opinions, they have a greater perspective to them. In fact, this is a time when you can be really led in the right direction by the divine uh, working through your perception of the world. It's like the angel that's on your shoulder now is whispering wisdom in your ear that you can attune to and to support you and guide you in life and you can trust that intuition Jupiter is intuition and you can trust that intuition that's whispering wisdom now when Jupiter transits the ninth house essentially what's happening here is we're getting a balance of spirituality with logical common sense now the ninth house is a very um, spiritually oriented house in terms of beliefs cultural practices religion um, but it's also very, uh, it wants the truth. It wants to seek the, the divine substance in things, the meaning, the purpose. And with that combining with a very spiritualized planet of Jupiter, the two energies of the ninth house and Jupiter combining, give you a time of life, a year in your life, because that's how long this transit will roughly last, when you're going to discover 
great, uh, great things about spirituality with a logical perspective on them and a realistic perspective on them. It's an integration of the heart and the mind coming together as one. Now, if you're in a business that deals with people from overseas in some capacity, maybe exporting or importing or, you know, selling services or something to people from foreign countries or even in your own country, if you're selling to a, a neighboring suburb uh, and it's a very different cultural suburb to you, maybe, you know, there's a Vietnamese community and you're from the Italian community or something. Um, this is where you can do very, very well this year because Jupiter allows the exchange of goods and business transactions between foreign cultures to really flourish under this energy. So if you're looking to establish a business that's based in foreign exchanges, then this is the year to do it. I mentioned a moment ago that Jupiter is very intuitive. In fact, when Jupiter is in the ninth house, we can find ourselves being very prophetic. Again, you can trust the angel on your shoulder to make the wise choices because there's this energy of knowingness about the future. If you think about the archetype of Sagittarius, which has connections to the ninth house, it's the archetype of the centaur firing his arrow off into the distance, looking forward, looking ahead, looking out there. And so there is this energy of prophecy, of looking to the future. What does the future hold that goes with Sagittarius, ninth house and Jupiter? So with Jupiter's intuition and the ninth house's connection to looking to the future, we are building for the future now. And there's a prophetic element in this transit that might be present. Trust your gut, trust your intuition about where you're heading and what you're trying to build and achieve and do, because usually Jupiter will not be steering you wrong during this transit. It's a house of inspiration and you will feel very inspired for the future, inspired to achieve, inspired to build, inspired to grow something that is long term in nature. Jupiter also rules ceremonies and rituals and here in the house of religion it might be a time when you actually enjoy those things, doing you know, a ceremony at solstice time or enjoying uh, some sort of family lineage you know, ceremony or recollection during the Day of the Dead or something that allows you to connect with ceremony, procedure and ritual in the ninth house, usually to do with spirituality, but it, it could be almost anything really. Um, but ceremony, rituals and practices of that nature will be more appealing to you under this transit. Now, in the Hindu system of astrology, when Jupiter is transiting through the ninth house, he's also, well, he's firstly going through the luckiest house, according to the Hindu system. The ninth house is considered to be the luckiest house in the chart, and therefore it's going to bring good fortune and success and happiness and blessings. This is particularly pertinent to the South Indian chart, where they believe that to be the case. Uh, this also is the house of the father. Uh, in the Hindu system and so connections with the father can really benefit and grow and flourish under this influence of Jupiter. It's a time when you know if you've got a good relationship with your father it can be enhanced and, and blessed. You might also receive from the father there might be an energy of gainfulness. Jupiter is to gain and Jupiter represents wealth so you might gain from a father figure in some way. Jupiter also is aspecting, oh he's about to go there, Jupiter is aspecting all the other uh, trinal houses, the first house and the fifth house, but also he's aspecting the house opposite it, which is the third house in Hindu. And when uh, we have aspects in Hindu, they are not, uh, in Western astrology, our aspects have either good or bad connotations to them and good or bad effects to them. But in the Hindu system, that's not the case. It's just an aspect. The quality of the aspect is seen by the planet. And in this case, all of these aspects are going to be beneficial because Jupiter is the great benefic. So the aspect to the first house brings good health, good happiness, you know, good bodily state of being, and maybe even some promotions and successes that come as well. The aspect that Jupiter makes to the house opposite at the third house, that's happening uh, and going to help you fulfill your desires in your daily environment. It might give you a chance to learn something new as well. Your siblings might be very uh, blessed and they might bless you. You might receive something from your siblings or there could be some um, enhancement of the relationship that you have with them in some way. The aspect that Jupiter makes to the fifth house, which is the second luckiest house in the Hindu system, means you could fall pregnant during this year. 
if that's something that you're wanting or your children might have a big strong influence in your life for good in some manner during this year of your life there'll be good times to be had with your own children that you already have and a good ch it's a good chance to do some um some investing as well you know any sort of risky ventures stock market ventures and so forth can be blessed you need other good factors in your chart as well i would add in your natal chart but this is a time when this energy can bring some positivity and some blessing to you um Creative expression also can be flourishing under this uh, energy of Jupiter as well, and it can you can really succeed well in sort of any field of creative expression or hobbies and interests that you might have. So that is what we're seeing with Jupiter's transit through the ninth house and what it can bring us. I hope you enjoyed this little look at what you're in for with a Jupiter transit in the ninth. And do tune in to all the other videos that I've prepared on Jupiter and his transits through the various houses as we go through this 12-year cycle of Jupiter. You're going to experience them all. So check them all out, be prepared and get ready to enjoy the blessing of Jupiter.